I'll, I'll start, and then Bjorn can take over when he sort of joins the story and whatnot. But uh, I moved out to Montana in 1990 with uh, four friends from Michigan. Had gone to school at Michigan State University and drove out to Alaska a couple summers to work in the fishing industry. And passed through Missoula. And the second time through, our van that we bought back in Michigan dropped its transmission, and we spent a couple days in Missoula. And I thought, it's kind of a cool town. So I ended up moving out to Missoula, and we're working in a ski shop, the same place that Bjorn was working. And I think the three of us that started Big Sky Brewing Company all got married within a year and a half, two years of each other. And we said, if we're going to stay in Missoula, we probably can't do it raising families, selling skis. And on those trips to Alaska, uh, a buddy of mine and I, uh, it was just when Full Sail Brewing was getting started in Hood River, Oregon, Took the ferry up to Alaska just when what was then Chinook Amber Ale, now Alaskan Amber was getting going. We'd always been beer drinkers, but we found this new thing going on with craft beer, and we started home brewing. So we moved out to Montana and kept on home brewing. Started a TV show called Beer Talk, where we sat on the set at MCAT, which is kind of what YouTube was back in the day, except it was very local. <laughs> and we sat around, and people said, hey, you get to get drunk on TV. And by the third show, we kind of were getting drunk on TV, I suppose. But it, we didn't really necessarily have the plan of starting the brewery when we first started Beer Talk, but we knew beer and we were really interested in home brewing. And when we moved to Missoula, Byron was already in existence, was a really good brewery. We brewed English style ales, so we thought, well, there's some differentiation there. And when we decided it's time to start a business, if we're going to stay in Missoula, we thought we knew more about beer than anything else and we enjoyed beer than, more than just about anything else, so let's try to start a brewery. And so my friend Brad and I had been home brewing together and we didn't have any business experience in the world. You can probably guess, working in ski shops, we didn't have a lot of money behind us. We did have our friend Bjorn, who needed to write a business plan to graduate from University of Montana. So Bjorn can take over right now. Oh, yeah. So I like beer a lot. And I spent a lot of time at the bars. I was, I'm actually a, a graduate, uh, I have a finance degree. And um, I knew my senior, by my senior year, I had zero interest in finance and my primary focus was on drinking beer. And so, so I'd actually got, I was working graveyards out at Champion when I, when I got laid off and ended up at the ski shop. It was this, this, I don't know, the stars aligned or something. And then I met Brad and Neil, beer lovers, beer lover myself, and I had to write a business plan. And so how lucky was I? I was like, wow, this sounds like a really, really cool thing because my, my big plan was, again, I was, I was going into banking, um, but I had an opportunity to use my, my acquired knowledge from the university and make beer. And then I was like, woohoo, <laughs> I was set. And, and the thing is, you know, what, what we talked about before we, we were gonna, you know, b before this, you know, this kind of free form for us, because we do this, you know, we talk about this all the time, but, Jackie really touched on a lot of the things of when you're taking an idea and transitioning it into reality. You know, it, it takes a little bit of courage. And, and one of my close friends, who's in the room, um, said, you know, Bjorn, I learned something. You know, once you get to, for most entrepreneurs or potential entrepreneurs, you get to about 90% of your goal. And you fail in that last 10%. So if I'm looking at your potential entre entrepreneurs, that last 10%, that's your success or failure. And if it is your failure, it's still not a failure at the, you know, at the end. You've learned something from it, but it's making, it's, you're, you're, you need to acquire these skills to go beyond 90%, you know, that, that once you hit that, it's, it's really scary because you're talking money, you're talking, you know, lifestyle. When we talk about, Jackie was asked the question of balancing family and, um, and, and work, you know, I think the answer is what, what works for you? You know, you get, each case is different. Um, the day my, my oldest son was born, he was born at one in the morning, I went to a brew fest at six, in the mor six that morning. So sacrifice is involved. There's courage involved, you know, and, and then you have to believe, I'm gonna cuss, you have to believe, and honestly, you have to believe your own bullshit when you're out there selling your idea, talking about it, you know, when you're out there developing your distribution network. And so this was a real maturation process 
for us because we had no idea what we were doing. We'd never brewed beer commercially. We'd never distributed beer. You know, we, we, we all liked beer, but that was the extent of it. Neil and Brad had, a, you know, we're home brewers. They were very good home brewers. And, and I really liked their beer. And I became a home brewer with these guys. So our kind of our focus here is going to stay in this infancy. We can go beyond that at later discussions. Come by the brewery. We'll talk over a beer about it. But we, you know, what we were talking about with our discussion here was in the infancy, the sheer terror, you know, of, of oh, my Lord, I'm going to go talk to an investor. I'm going to ask them for money. How do I get the money? Once I get the money, what do I do with it? Um, so do we want to shift back and forth? Here? Sure, I'll, I'll pop okay, in. Okay, let's go. Beer. Sure. Let's um, go. Well, so, so we had this show called Beer Talk, and people, if nothing else, knew that there were a couple guys that liked beer and drank beer and talked about beer all the time, and they had dogs. So that was our, I think our audience getter was they had cute dogs running around the set and whatnot. But we went to the, the Missoula Beer Festival the first time it occurred, and uh, this was a couple years before the brewery got started. And we had people coming up to us asking what's going on with the show, what are you talking about, and we were starting to talk to people about we might start a brewery. That's what we were interested in. So we had some local recognition, and we had Bjorn working on the business plan. We didn't have any cash, and we didn't have Bjorn's, not really born, but mostly raised in the Flathead Valley, knew a lot of people in Missoula. Brad and I at that time had lived in Missoula for a couple of years. We had to find local people that had some business backgrounds and that had some reputations around town. So the first thing after Bjorn had kind of finished up his business plan, and we were kind of trying to find investors, First question for most every investor is who's already in, and when you're told you get to be number one, that's not what most of them want to hear. <laughs> so we went to the biggest accounting firm, Galusha Higgins Galusha. We went to the attorneys in town that we thought maybe, I don't know if we knew it or just found it on the yellow pages or whatever, at that time it was Warden Thane and Haynes. And we had, we talked to, for whatever reason, we started out talking to these guys who were really high up in the organizations. I don't know how we even started there. But after the first meeting, we got their junior sort of assistant guy. One of them is now kind of our controller at the brewery. The other one is still our attorney. I think if we could afford him, he'd be our attorney. <laughs> but these are people that they were starting out too. And they became great resources for us. Having those companies kind of behind us, you know, putting some of those names on some of the projections and whatnot was really beneficial to us. So, you know, if you're doing something, you're writing a book, you're probably doing it on your own. If you're starting a business, unless you've already got some kind of backing behind you, finding local people that other business people, other potential investors know something about was really beneficial to us moving forward. Yeah, when, um, when he's talking about these guys that we met, um, Galusha Higgins, Galusha Warden Thane and Haynes, I, where we met those guys, I mounted their skis. I was a ski tech <laughs> at the shop. And I was like, well, what we could do here, you could either wait a week to get your skis, or if you go get me a case of beer, I'll have them done by the time you get back. And so that was how we broached the conversation. And so, so um, as we're, you know, you know, with, with uh, you know, because there, there's a lot of skiers in Missoula, and so we got to, and we were ski bums ourselves. So the neat thing about that is in broaching that conversation, oh, you like beer? Yeah, I like beer. As a matter of fact, we're, talk, we're, we're talking about starting a brewery. And I've got, you know, the guys that were here, they know how to brew beer, and, and I knew everything about numbers in my mind. Um, and so, so we broached the conversation, and then, then we went from there is, is what that enables to do is as after the business plan was built, we built in business terms, it was called your tombstone. They legitimized the project for us. Now, we were a little bit more complex in that we didn't have any money to start this project. We were making $6 an hour. What we were doing is there, we were selling skis, mounting skis, and there was a, a ski incentive going on that if you sell, sold X amount of skis, you would get a free pair, and that free pair we would turn around and sell it. That's actually how we paid our le our legal bills for the first <laughs> six to eight months. So we sold a lot of skis in that particular brand. And I was like, oh, do you, you know, no matter what that person needed, they needed that ski. <laughs> and so, so which is which you know so, so that paid the bills and helped de helped develop the tombstone, which legitimized our business. Because we formed up as a C-Corp, because not having any money, a sole proprietor didn't make sense. You know, S-Corp didn't make sense. We needed bona fide shareholders. Yeah, it takes a lot of money. This is a, you know, equipment-intensive business and whatnot. I might have my numbers wrong, Bjorn, correct me if I am. But we had to 
raise two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars to qualify for a loan that kind of paid off the remainder of what we needed, and yeah. that was a big long project for us. It took us a couple of years to raise that. And just the development of the business, we we're in we're in hock for about fifty thousand dollars. Well, we weren't the the attorneys and the and the accountants were because they believed us. You know, we we actually believed us for some strange reason. Um, but the, the the neat thing about that is. When you're excited about your project, when you believe it, when it's surrounded by sound fundamental business theory, we recognize need. And so one of the things I was like, darn it, Jackie's talking before us. She's going to talk about everything that we want to talk about. But <laughs> it really reiterates you know, what she had in slides. We live that as well. I think it's a, it's a common theme amongst entrepreneurs. You're going to live that. You know, the, the grind, the balance. And then do you really believe it? Do you have the energy to, to go beyond 90%? And so with this, we demonstrated to our tombstone people that, that we, we did have energy. So what we ended up doing as we, as we developed the company, we were in hock for our attorneys for about $25,000, for our accountants for about $30,000. And that's after all the skis that, we, that, we, that we'd sold. And so the neat thing about that is when we'd have a candid conversation about them, we were like, hey, we're making six bucks an hour. You know, what if this doesn't work? And, and what these people would say, well, we just chalk it off as a great experience in pro bono, you know, time. So, so it, you know, so they were having Passion fun. goes a long way. Yes, that's, yes. That's what it comes down to. And that's how you get people to believe in you. Uh, is, uh, you. You better believe it yourself, and you better be enthusiastic about it. And you also better be able to answer questions. I bet we're getting close to the end of the time. Yeah.